I'm Hudson. I'm Julian. And we are trying to learn new facts about volcanoes and different landforms. I am looking at um, Liam and Jada's marine um, project. iPads and Chromebooks are the keys to discovery in this student-created landform museum at Genoa Elementary School. With augmented reality, using an app called Roar, fourth graders create an interactive display where volcanoes erupt off the screen. Then other students learn from that creation. The first thing you do is you take the iPad and you put it in front of the picture. And then it sort of becomes like a 3D, like the words in the picture and the video, it all pops out at you. Like they're essentially making a poster, but a very more, much a more in-depth poster. They're able to add videos, pictures, text with the image that could also be sort of captions and um, labeling of their landforms. This really forced them to dig into the different types of landforms, so they were each assigned a different one, and it was their job to explain to their peers, uh, maybe the most famous ones, how they are formed, where they can be found. Oh, you have to look up, so I see that it says Marine State Park. And we definitely need to give kids choices of how they're presenting information that they've learned. Um, and doing something like this, this is very innovative because there are so many new tools out there nowadays um, that are leaning towards virtual reality and augmented reality. So just kind of preparing our students for what's out there in the world right now. What's the biggest cave, Eric? The biggest cave is Hong Song Dong. Hong Song Dong. Students uncover answers to questions about the landform by carefully watching a Flipgrid video. I like making videos because it, it, I just like to, like, I like people to see me and what I know. It will pop up on this thing called a grid, and so that's why they call it a flip grid. It's kind of you're flipping your classroom where kids are being able to respond. Um, but the cool thing is you can actually share specific students' responses, so if I said, you know, these students, I wanted to share their response with their parents. I could hit the little share button at the top and send that mom and dad a link to directly to that student. We have fun researching together and making projects. The other aspect of the project was doing the research. So, and that's definitely part of the tech standards is being able to go in and say, what information do I need? What's appropriate for the audience that I have as well? Along the way, things don't always go as planned but those challenges are also learning opportunities. Some days, we, uh, the Chromebook on the war, the war wouldn't really load. Yeah, it wouldn't load so it would, yeah, like so we couldn't get our stuff on the uh, war. We just decided to do our foot rig to problem solve. Definitely um, problem solving because, well, there's only usually one teacher in the room and they're off trying to figure out some things by themselves. So definitely problem solving. A lot of social interactions with their peers trying to come up with ways to solve the problem. Um, definitely a lot of divvying up work, like maybe one would research some things, one would find a video. I like doing things a little bit more independent. I think that's a better way for me to learn. It's kind of fun. It's fun because we get to learn new things and um, see our friends um, tell us stuff. The biggest advice that I would have was just being willing to try something new. Um, take a chance. Nothing's going to work perfectly. Not everything worked perfectly with this project that we did, but we problem solved and worked through it, and we already have ideas of what we're going to do ne different next year with the kids. Yay! Bye. Bye.